our earliest ancestor was a Joseph Wheatung who settled here in 1806. He came from the woods north of the Sioux and started a trading post shortly thereafter. And this evolved from that trading post. After World War II, some of the local craftspeople started trading their crafts for groceries. And we had a small area in the fishing lodge where we sold fishing tackle. And we started putting the crafts in with the fishing tackle. And here we are. My mother and father started a, the craft business and they started trying to make things on a, on a bigger scale than just individuals and then we could sell it across Canada. They started almost like an assembly line, but it had to be geared so that people could work at home and mind their children at the same time. There was no daycare in those days. So we developed product lines like this doll, uh, which several different families would work on in the, in the evolution, not the evolution, but in the, in the production of the doll. Uh, the clothes are made of leather and, and embroidered so that you'd have, we would take patterns and leather to a family and they would trace out the, the patterns and cut out the clothes and sew them together. And then some, maybe another family would then add the embroidery and put the fur on it. The fur is kind of a difficult thing to work with. You had to have some, some special skills. And, and then a third family would do the finishing off, dress the doll and, and fix it all up. And, and then we'd bring it back to our central warehouse, package it up and, and hold it for shipping. People would, could work as much or as little as they wanted. It was very flexible. They'd phone when they were ready to have an order picked up and we'd take down the money and pick up their, their work. And, and if they wanted, we'd bring them a fresh supply of raw materials. And, very, it was very well geared to, to the way of life here. Uh, it continued uh, vigorously up into the 80s. The museum started uh, back in the 60s. It started as a collection of, of just products, crafts. We'd get a, an example of something and some, one of us would say, this is too good to sell. One of the first things that we uh, started the save that ended up in the museum are these starburst boxes here were done by an older lady on the reserve and uh, they were they're they're superb and we started saving them and then then we started saving other things too I used to make teepees for the craft shop up here quite a few of them um, so it must have been the uh, 1960, 60, 60. No, in the 60s, early 60s, when I, when I started. I made the teepees first, and then I made, started making the quill boxes. I could make maybe six a day, because they were only this tall, eh? I, I, and I don't have one, but I have a pattern of them. I still have the pattern of them. I enjoy doing it, and it's something that... Um, it been handed down from my grandmother, my mother, and it, so it'll be, I think it'll be a long, around for a long time, hopefully. Yeah. This kind of work is an art and deserves recognition as stuff, that it's, it's not craft. It it's, it's, takes a real skilled person to do this. We've helped preserve it. We've, we've uh, made it respectable for, for collectors of native art. Helped the community through financial hard times. We've, we've got a very nice reserve here now.